Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you everything you need to know about choosing the spoofer. I'm going to start from the very basics and then go to some more advanced stuff. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to hide processes and then go push to the next step. So let's begin. The first thing you have to do is download the zip file you get once you purchase the product and with it you should also get a key. Now you always have access to the download file as long as you're a customer and a member of the server. Okay, so once you download the zip file and you extract all the files and you're inside the folder, you should see something like this. So you have to right click the client and run as administrator. Once you do that, you should see a window like this. So you have to go into edit files, log in, and in here you have to enter the information you received. So it goes your username and then the key. You can just copy paste it and then save. You can press Ctrl and S to save it or click on file and then save. Now let's close this and verify that the information is correct. I'm going to click start spoofer. And there you go, everything's fine. There is no error messages, which means that the spoofer is working correctly. So let me explain something before I continue. This thing right here, the client, is really just a helper tool. You can close it at any point and it's not going to affect the actual spoofer, which is this window. And uh, you can just close it and it's going to work just fine, right? But this window, however, is very important. It's the thing that handles all of the things. So you can hide it, but it needs to be running in the background, right? So if I press Ctrl Alt O, which is just a shortcut, you can, of course, change it to whatever you want, but you can hide it and it's completely invisible. You can also just open it and then you have to close it if you no longer wish for spoofer to work. Okay, now let's go and try to hide some processes. So let's open Task Manager and find some random processes to hide. I'm just going to pick some random things, but it should work for anything. So when you're in client, you have to click on process tool. And uh, let me explain a few things. So on the left side where it says find process, you can find processes, of course, that you want to hide. So if I was to look for, for example, Discord, right? Discord. You can see right here and if i click move all or move selected of course once i clicked it i can click move selected but it's okay if you've impressed like move all right so as soon as you click move all and you see it right here you can see the process disappears however we don't know the process name right so we can just guess it so you can see right here it says process spoofer client but we don't know the process name right if a process right it doesn't show it because that's because we don't know the process name and the way you enable it is you go right up here and click on the CPU or any of these fields and select process name. Once you do that, you can see that it shows all the process names. And right here you can see it says clients.exe and if I look for clients, there it is. So let's move on and it just disappears. Now let's hide, for example, OBS. You can see it has this one thing right obs 64 so obs move all and it just disappears let's try to hide brave let's expand it right brave 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 move all and it disappears however if i was to open process hacker and i was to look for brave or any of the hidden processes oh it's because i'm actually <laughs> already hiding from process hacker but if I was to delete it from here right delete process hacker and I restart process hacker you can see that we can actually find it right here and that's because process hacker isn't added to the scanners list now scanners as you can see right here is all the programs that you want to hide from right it's any tool such as process explorer process hacker and task manager they will all be stored in here so if I was to look for Discord, you can see right, it's right here. However, it's not shown in Taskbar, sorry, in Task Manager. It's because, of course, we're hiding from Task Manager and not from Process Hacker. So let's find Process Hacker's name. It's right here, processhacker.exe. And if we go into the scanners file, click the little arrow, go into the scanners, and you add process, let's type it correctly, processhacker.exe. You don't have to add .exe, but it's okay. Just click Add, and you should see it just disappears. Now, if I was to open Process Explorer, I can still find, for example, Discord 
and I can find Brave, right? It's because we're not hiding from Process Explorer. So you can see right here, it says internals, Pros EXP64, and let's look for it. We can also do it from here, right? Pros, I just click it, move selected, and the thing should disappear, right? If I look for Discord, it doesn't exist. And if I go back to Process Hide, and I delete Discord from here, right? The both apps are searching for it, and I like delete selected, it should pop right back up here, right? And you can also just hide it again. So Discord, move on, and you can see it disappears. So this is it for hiding the processes. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. Okay, so you learn how to hide processes. Now let's learn how to blacklist them. You have to open the process tool again, and we have to select in the pick a file blacklist so in here any process that you add is going to be killed as soon as it is detected so for example if i was to add notepad right so notes we, we can't find it here because it's not running but if we add it directly from here notepad add to file and if i try to open notepad you can see that it gets killed immediately because notepad it keeps getting killed and if I try to add something else, such as Task Manager, let's open it right now. And if I add it right here, right, so Task MGR, you can see that it gets killed immediately. Now, even if I close the client, I still try to open Task Manager, it's not gonna work. And that's because Poofer is running in the background. And you can see that every time I try to terminate, for example, Task Manager, it gets logged right here and this window as i said before has to be open for process poofer to work now let's hide it again and try to remove task manager from the blacklist okay so we open the process tool go back to the blacklist and remove task manager and if i try to open it you can see it opens up no problems so yeah that's basically how blacklist works now let's go to the next tutorial Okay, now let's learn how to hide icons from taskbar. So for example, if you wanted to hide notepad from taskbar, but have the window open, you would have to go into process tool, go to icons hide, and in here we have to add notepad's process name. So just go notepad, move all, and you can see it disappears, however, it's still open. This function breaks the interface, but it hides it. It doesn't necessarily break it, you can still minimize it and do all those things with it. However, it might break right in here, you might not be able to see it. And many weird things can happen because this function isn't very much polished and not every program is going to react to the same. However, you can see it works just fine. You can see it right here, but you can use it just fine. Okay, now let's go to settings and learn how to rename files. Okay, now let's learn how to work with settings. So if you click settings, you're going to see a bunch of options right here. First one, there is uh, file names, then we have thread speed and some options right here. So let's start from the bottom to explain the most basic things. Run or startup basically means Poofer is going to run silently every time you start your computer. So you can bring it back up, right? You can bring the window back up by pressing the shortcut key, whatever you have set. I'll show you later how to do it. And it's going to work just fine. Okay, now let's talk about thread speed. So thread speed basically defines how fast spoofer is going to work. And the lower you go, the faster spoofer is going to work and the higher CPU usage is going to be. And I suggest you go around 500 to 1000 because there is really no need to go any lower than say 500. Right? I'll keep it at 380. I was doing some testing, but you'll find whatever you like. So let's explain what the files do. So for example, if I was to run spoofer, let me close this first and run spoofer. Let's minimize this, go back to settings. And uh, if I was to open, we go into data and I was to open process hide.txt, 
you can see there is all these processes that we are hiding, right? So if I open Task Manager, you can see that all these processes are hidden. If I was to remove client.exe, it should pop right back up. But what happens if we wanted to rename this file? If we don't want to store processes in this file, right? So if I was to go into settings, and change process hide to something else, such as uh, I'll do something random. txt doesn't have to end with txt. You can add whatever you want, but let's copy it and create a new file. Let's paste the name and save it. So if we save this, okay, ignore the first error. There is some debug issue, but basically the process hide is going to be stored into this file. So if I open, if I actually have to restart Task Manager, if I open it, you can see that nothing is hidden. So if I was to go into Process Hide and I try to hide Brave, so Brave.exe, you see that it's still here, right? Nothing is hidden. However, if I was to open uh, this file, and I add brave.exe, you can see that it disappears. And I add notepad.exe, oops. You can see everything disappears. I can add client.exe, and it's gonna work the same way. This applies for everything in here, right? You can change the blacklist, scanners, hide icon, you can change whatever you want. Okay, now you know how settings work. Let's learn how to work with shortcuts. Let's close this because we don't need it anymore. And let's look into the data folder. So if you look at this file, config.shooks, and you right click it, I'm gonna open it with subline text, but you can use whatever you want. And we look at the last line. This is what we're interested in. Shortcut key code. This code is essentially this character, O character. So you're like, okay, how to find the character? Well. We have to go into a browser and look for win user e codes. Click on the first website. I will also link it in the description. It's taking very long for some reason. My CPU is dying. But you can see right here, there is some values and this is what we need. Now let's try to change the from O to, for example, P. So let's go down and find the character P. It's right here, 0x50. Let's copy the hex code, right? And let's go into the file. And if we change this to the new value, let's save it and let's close this. We have to restart it. Now remember what it says, Control Alt O. Now let's close it. And if I press it, you can see it works just fine. However, if I was to restart Spoofer, let's run into the administrator. Oh, by the way, the the executable name is randomized every time you run it. But if you use client, you won't have to worry about it. But this is basically the main spoofer program. So yeah, just right click it, run as administrator, and you will see this window. So it says, press Control Alt and P to show hide this window. And you can see that we changed the key successfully. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. And I might add more features in the future, but I'll make sure to keep you updated. You can also always find tutorials on my website. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the description or join my Discord server and ask me directly or just create a ticket. Thank you for watching and I will see you very, very soon.